We can also exercise greater control over the axes by using the functions scale x discrete and scale y discrete and of course their analogs scale x continuous and scale y continuous. Okay, You use scale x discrete and scale y discrete when the variable you're con controlling is discrete. It's not a continuous variable. Typically a character variable or a factor or something like that. You will use continuous when the variable is numeric. Let's take an example here. So we are doing a uh, AES drive, uh, x-axis the drive, y-axis is the highway mileage. We've seen this plot before and we are jittering the plot and we are saying we want scale x discrete limits equals CFR. Okay, so again we are trying to control the x-axis and we are telling the system I want to see the x-axis values only for the front wheel drive and rear wheel drive cars. Okay, now so far as this this code is concerned, this is not any different from using the xlim function. We had done exactly the same thing earlier by using the xlim function. Now here I'm showing you that scale x discrete is a more general function. You can control the limits, but as you will soon see, you can also control other things. Okay, so this is going to plot this same chart that we have seen before. And as I've already pointed out, scale x discrete with limits is the same as x lim f r. Okay, the two are exactly the same. So you may say then why do you need two different functions to do it? If you're controlling only the limits on the axis then this is a good idea. But if you want to control other things about the axis then you have to go to scale x discrete. We'll see examples of what other things we can control on the axis. Okay, so uh, so you've got these two functions to control the limits and you've got these two functions to control the limits on the y-axis. The important thing to note is don't use both of these things in the same call. Okay, if you use xlim and then use scale x discrete, xlim will get ignored. Okay, that is because scale x discrete has some default values for limit which will take effect. Okay, so you have to be careful. Don't never use both of these in the same plot. Never use both of these in the same plot. If you have to control only the limits, use xlim or ylim. If you have to control the limits and some other things, then do everything with the scale x discrete or scale y discrete functions. This is important for you to understand. Okay, so what are the effect? What is the effect of using xlim or ylim or controlling controlling the limits? through scale x discrete or so on. Okay, so uh, I already told you that when you use these things xlim or ylim or again through scale x discrete or y scale y discrete if you control the axis then data gets eliminated. Okay, so in this case this is the there's no this is the complete original box plot. Now if I do the same thing with ylim 13 to 40. Okay, so in this case, what I'm saying is the y-axis, the, the city uh, mileage, I'm interested in the cars which have only a mileage between 13 and 40, not in the entire range because you can see the entire range spans from 10 all the way up. Okay, but I'm not placing any limits on the x-axis. Okay, so what is going to happen as per our prior discussion? is that the system is first going to eliminate the data that doesn't correspond to this and then it's going to plot the box plot. So the box plot is going to look different. Okay, notice how different these two box plots are in, in some of the bar, uh, bars, right? Especially in uh, bars where this range is affected, right? See this box, it looks like this here. This box looks very different. Okay, that is because some of the data from this box has been eliminated and it looks different. Similarly, this box looks like this here, it looks like this here, right? So the plot itself is different, which is what I meant earlier by saying that putting xlim or ylim may sometimes be the same as zooming into a plot, especially when you're looking at scatter plots uh, and histograms. They, it, the effect may be the same as zooming, but it's better not to think of it as zooming because data elimination is going to occur and then the plot is going to occur and that may be the effect may be quite different from zooming because for box plots the effect is going to be different from that of just zooming 
Okay, so that's the important point to understand that because some data is eliminated, the boxes themselves have changed. So the effect is not just that you're zooming on to a particular area of the plot, meaning it's effectively the same, but you're just looking at a particular region. No, this is a completely different plot. Okay, so if your intention is to zoom, you have to do something else that I will show shortly. If your interest is to truncate and then view the result, then use xlim or ylim or control the limits through scale x discrete or scale y discrete. This is important to understand. Okay, so now we are going to look at how do you zoom. So this is the same plot earlier, which is the truncated plot. Okay, and this is the plot which is the zoomed plot. Okay, so look, both of them are showing the limits, y limit as 13 to 40, right? But in this case, I'm showing the, this is based on truncation. In this case, I'm using a function called coord Cartesian. This is what you should be using if you want to zoom. Okay, notice how different these two plots look. This plot is a zoomed version of the original plot, right? So if you looked at the original plot without any truncation. I'll just go back to it. This is the plot without any truncation. Okay. All we did in this other plot that we just showed you Okay. So here we just zoomed into a certain area of the plot with the result that we're not seeing some parts of this box right because we zoomed into it and we cut out of it okay so this is really truly zooming so if you want to actually zoom into an area of the plot without changing the plot in any way then you use coord cartesian and then spe specify your x and y limits or x or y limits whichever you want okay so this doesn't change the plot you only zoom into a certain area this actually could change the plot itself okay data elimination occurs here no data elimination occurs, only zooming is occurring here. Okay, now sometimes, as we've already noticed in our one of our earlier examples, uh, ggplot by default chooses the lower and upper limits for the two axes. Okay, most of the time it will choose the axis limits based on the underlying data values. Okay, now sometimes people would consider th that to be misleading, right? So in this case, for example, your y-axis is starting not at zero at all. y-axis is starting a little bit above zero. Okay. Now some cases, especially when you do scatter plots or when you show lines, this may be misleading. For box plot, not so much. Okay. But if you're showing lines and so on, this could be misleading. So what you may want to do is to say, well, no matter what, even though the there is no data below, let's say eight, I still want the plot to start at zero. Okay. If you want to do that, then all you have to do is to use the expand function. Okay, so you see here, I'm saying expand limits y equals zero, right? So by default, it chose the y limit at, let's say, starting at eight and going up to the maximum. It chose that because of the data that it had. We are saying, no, don't go by that. Please take the y limits all the way down to zero. So if you do that, then you'll see that y is going to start at zero and the plot is all, this. It's the plot is not changed in any way. It's just pushed up. All the boxes have been pushed up a little bit. Okay, so that's the idea here. So sometimes this is important. You don't want to show a misleading chart. So if you want to show a true chart in which everything is starting at zero and so on, then it becomes important, right? Sometimes when people want to exaggerate certain differences, right, they'll show the, uh, they will cut off some parts of the axis and so the bars look very different. Okay, it's not, especially with b bars, uh, this is a big deal with uh, with bar plots and so on. They, they may try to exaggerate by doing that. Okay, if you wanted to start all the way at zero, then some of the differences that looked great when it did not start at zero, when you do start at zero, those differences seem not so significant. Okay, so when people want to mislead you, they may do that. So of course, we want to take care that our charts are not misleading anyone. So we may, we may want to use the expand limits function to do this. Okay, now sometimes we may want to have fixed X and Y scales. Okay, so I'm just creating a data frame here, just 
a random data frame with uh, you know some x and y values okay and i plot it and uh, we see it like this okay so we've got the x axis going from 0 up to about 50 and the y axis going from 0 to 100 and we see the plot like this okay now notice how the scales have been shown here right because of the fact that the x values were between 0 and 50 it shows uh, you know a nice expansive scale and the y axis values were going from 0 to 100 so there are actually more values here but this scale is a lot more condensed okay mainly because i guess my plotting area was sort of rectangular like this and so the system uh, j d used the scales based on what kind of plotting area was available to it okay now you may want to say well no i don't want that i want to control how much of you know i want to control exactly how this scaling is done so in this case i am using the function coord fixed okay i want fixed coordinates and therefore uh, a one unit of length on the x axis will have the same value as one unit of length on the y axis right so if you see here uh, so 0 to 50 and this is roughly twice the size of this right so and then when you draw the line you get a proper 45 degree line because uh, the rate at which x and y axis are increasing is exactly the same okay so that that's that's what you're seeing here and that's the purpose of coord fixed you can also set the ratio of the scaling right so this is coord fixed but here i'm saying ratio is half okay that is i want the uh, ratio between the x and the y axis to be uh, between the y and the x axis to be half or i think x and the y axis because x is up to 50 y is up to 100 uh, okay so the y axis ratio is actually half of the x axis ratio right see here uh, in this same distance that moves 10 points on the x axis will move 20 points on the y axis okay not 25 because if you really uh, scan this here it would come somewhere here it's 20 right so the uh, y axis actually has half the resolution as the x axis and other things that you typically want to control on uh, plots are tick mark positions right because by default once again ggplot just chooses some places to put the tick marks there's some internal method by which they're doing that quite often i find that the tick mark there are far too few tick marks on ggplot plots i want to increase the number of tick marks and we can control that right so here this is the plot and the system has chosen some default tick marks in this case it's quite all right i think the tick marks it's showing are, are fine but suppose we want to show more ticks tick marks you can also say you can uh, use the scale x continuous function of course scale y x discrete if the axis happens to be discrete in this case our axis is continuous so we are saying scale x continuous and we can specify the actual breaks right so here i'm saying put a tick mark at every five points not at the default of every 10 that it seems to have chosen okay so then you get the plots are otherwise exactly the same except that there are more tick marks on the x-axis now okay so this is what i meant by saying you can use the scale x and scale y functions discrete continuous functions to control things other than the limits so this is an example where we control the tick marks shortly we'll see an example of doing something else okay so this is the same plot as before okay now another thing that we would also use uh, do using the scale functions is to control the numbers okay now notice this first plot okay i have not actually shown you what the plot was based on okay so the two plots are the same except that when the numbers are very large this is a data set that we'll, you're going to be using in your uh, home assignment for the week okay when the numbers become very large G, uh, r starts using scientific notation to represent the numbers okay and of course uh, especially plots that we are showing to managers we really don't want to put scientific numbers scientific notation and one way to control that is to set this option 
called options psi pen equals 999. Well, what does this mean, psi pen? This is actually short form for the penalty that the system is supposed to apply when uh, f apply in order to use scientific notation. Okay, so you can put a number here between one and 999, but of course you want to say, well, I never want you to display scientific notations ever then you say 999 which is the highest penalty and then you will almost never see scientific notation. Okay, So this is what happens now. So you see numbers going from 0 all the way up to I think here this is a billion. Okay, But nowhere has it resorted to scientific notation. Okay, So, so that was the idea. I think it's a 10 million not a billion. It's probably 10 million. Okay, So that's the problem. So that's still a problem. This has not fixed the problem because I'm not able to take one look at it and say what the number is because there are so many zeros and I'm not able to count those zeros just from here. If we added commas, that would have been nice. Okay, so that's the next thing we're going to look at to add commas. Okay, so this is how you get commas. You say scale x continuous, label equals scales colon colon comma. Now you can add this to other things. So for example scale x continuous you can do the breaks uh, f like before and then you add this labels equals scales colon colon comma. Now incidentally scales is a package and scales is a package which gets loaded whenever ggplot is loaded. Okay, uh, so it's or, or at least scales is installed along with ggplot right. So whether it's loaded or not I'm not too sure. Now this shows you a trick where you can call a feature of a package even though you have not loaded the package. Of course the package has to be installed but not necessarily loaded with the library command. Even if it's not loaded you can still use features from the package by prefixing the name of the package. Okay, So scales is the name of a, pac of a package which we have not loaded using the library function but we can still call a feature called comma from the scales package. Okay, So scales colon colon comma is nothing but package name colon colon feature. Okay, So if you do this then it's going to show you commas. Okay, Now sure enough this is 10 million. The moment you see the commas we are able to immediately make out what the number is. That's the whole point about this. Okay, And this is something we would of course be using uh, quite a lot because uh, when we have large numbers, we really do want to show commas on the plots.